Through the papers for you this morning, TalkSport Radio presenters Mike Graham and Mike Parry are here. Good morning to you both, gentlemen. Yes, very good, good morning. morning to you too. Thank yeah. you very much um, for uh, having us. Well, let's kick straight off with the sun, should we? The water in Majolka looks <laughs> scarier than it ought. Well, it certainly does, doesn't it? There's a shark uh, swimming very, very close to some yeah. uh, rather happy-looking holidaymakers there. Yeah. Now, it's a blue shark, which is apparently not particularly dangerous and has only bitten humans... 13 times in 500 years. However, right. however, if you saw a shark you swimming it. towards you, I wouldn't want to be number the old 14. dorsal fin coming yeah. towards you, yeah. uh, you know, in the middle yeah, of a summer holiday, be number you wouldn't be going, oh, don't worry, it's only a blue shark. Yeah. You know. Nor would you be standing there going through no. the media. Yeah, no. I mean, yeah, let me just double check what no, kind of shark think this it was is. Yeah. 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 I mean, apparently it had been harpooned and so it lost its sense of direction and it was flapping yeah. about oh, on the beach. It did get get away, but there was people screaming, running, as you would imagine. those guys. Those guys are paddling away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've told my kids many a time, don't worry about the Mediterranean, there's no sharks in it. Absolutely no sharks. <laughs> and I now know I'm going to have to explain to them how this shark got into the Mediterranean. Yeah, it doesn't look Shocking. dangerous, though, does it? It's just flapping around there. I mean, well, you say that, but if you were swimming out sort of 10 feet away from the shore and you saw a dorsal fin... Well, yes, I agree with that, that a little dangerous. bit, but you're only in a foot of water, so you could actually boot it or something like that. Really? You know what I mean? Well, it's, you not know, like, you? it's not uh, like I in Jaws, where it, where it locks no. your leg yeah. into its jaws and then takes you on a... Well, they have got Majorca as, as a headline inside, yeah. which is pretty good, really. Yeah. Oh, have they? W, yes. Oh, well, it's... It's a headline writer's mm. dream. It is. Mm. Story yeah. like this. I always well, think it's quite interesting because the blo cause it's all about, you talk about the dorsal fin, mm. it's all about Jaws. It is. Isn't it? And yet the it bloke who, who wrote Jaws said one of, one of his regrets is that it, it turned people against Sure. Yes. Oh. Well, I mean, it's one of those terrible quotes that you'd have to think what do you about. Think would it? happen? Peter <laughs> Blenchley. You know, all right, Peter. So you're going to write a book about a killer shark. Yeah. You think people are going to turn against sharks? That's right, really? Yeah. yeah. How extraordinary. We have a correspondent in Australia, and the only thing we ever talk about once a week is the latest shark attack. Yeah. So they know about sharks. And down they've got there, proper yeah. sharks down there. Yeah, they have. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I don't know how much longer we're going to do this headline because Citizen 99 has said you've done the water in Majolka thing to death now. Mm. Stop it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I always say, don't just take. One person's told. word for it. <laughs> <laughs> of, course, of course, it could close down this resort. Well, but it's, it's in Magaluf. Yeah. Which, <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. I mean, people might not want to go in the water. That's, that's oh, exactly. Yeah. Come on, though. It'll, it'll take a lot to drive the youngsters out of Magaluf. Well, well, well it take, yeah, but what about the parents? No one will go to Magaluf. It's full of sharks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. that, I wouldn't go to Magaluf, but that's not why. <laughs> that's not why. No, <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's have a look at the mail. Uh, loyalty to the Queen. Yeah, this is interesting, this, isn't it? Because do you remember a couple of years ago, or three, four years ago, the Pope suddenly announced he was stepping down and retiring. I didn't know Popes could retire. No, I and didn't, it, actually. And, and no. in the same way, I don't know how Harry can get away with saying, oh, I nearly quit the royal family. To do what? Mm. I didn't think that when you were a member of the royal family, you could suddenly opt out and say, I'm resigning, because nobody gave you the job in the first place. You, you were born into it. Well, guess what was King Edward, the whatever yeah. it was, did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, Edward VIII. Yeah. yeah, Edward VIII's uh, abdication, we all know about. But, I mean, he was the king, he was the monarch, he stood down and somebody took his place. The point is, when you're the spare... Uh, who, who takes the place of the spare if you step down? And what would Harry do if he stepped down? He's a good guy. He goes around raising an awful lot of money for charity and helping charities. And he enjoyed his time he, in the he, army. He, exactly. He served his time, become a helicopter pilot. I think he, for a royal, I think he's done a, a pretty good job. There's a few people ahead of him as well. So, I mean... Yeah. Oh, well, there is now, Even yeah. if he did retire, I don't suppose yes. anyone would care, really, would they? Well, no, they wouldn't. But where would he go? What would he do? Would he go and buy a farm in, like... Somerset I or something. I imagine he'd probably and, get a couple of and, you know, and, directorships in the city, wouldn't he? Well, I suppose so, but you still can't have a member of the royal family who are terribly privileged from mm. the day they're born saying, yeah, thanks for all that, now I'm copying out. They are privileged, you're right, in, in many ways, and of course yeah. the one thing they're never short of is money. Mm. But actually, it's like one of those things, that, you know, would you want to be George Clooney or whatever, because there's a huge amount yeah. of pressure that he hasn't asked well, for. Well, I, I totally agree, but it's the life he was born into. Yeah. I mean, people who are born into rich families which aren't royal have the burden of their parents' wealth, but he yeah. has duty. Yeah. Duty yeah. is stamped on his head. This is the difference, though, George Clooney or any other actor yeah. or singer, they've chosen to be mm. actors or singers. Exactly. He, as you said, he was born into it, so yes. he didn't necessarily choose this no, life that no. he's now been living and he just he says at one point it just got too much for him and but i still think it's a question of duty i mean yeah. you know when yeah but, but, but to, to be fair now. to him he's, he's uh, he, he has stuck to that duty yes he has, he has. Oh, oh he has but I the other thing agree. this story's done over the course of the last few days as yeah. well is, is bring out all the republicans who were saying well of course even the royal family don't even now think the royal family is worth keeping that's right so you know that's all going to kick off again yeah right there, so they, I, mean, I mean the one months. one line in it picked up on it was oh nobody in the royal family wants to be the next monarch yeah. i don't believe that prince 
Scholes is desperate to be the monarch. He would take it uh, in the in the this afternoon. Of an <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he would. You're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, but wasn't there a quote as well? He says something about um, it, anyone who wants to be monarch shouldn't be monarch, sort mm. of thing. This is a Groucho Marx scenario, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. but actually, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, well, but, you know, I'm not sure about it. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just. Yeah, I I, I I think he's You've got a romantic notion of it. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. I think he's yeah. raised an issue of you know what are the royal family all about. Yeah, on the bike you just see more than you ever could on foot. You can stop when you want, chat with the locals, and you just don't get stuck in traffic. Or very rarely, anyway. Pose, ladies. Hello, gorgeous. Oh, well. Usual luck with the ladies. Of it, I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. I think he's yeah. raised an issue of, you know, what are the royal family all about, which they don't really need, actually, in this present uh, Well, you uh, could, time. I mean, given the, the recent tragedies and we've been seeing in yeah. the attacks, they played a pretty key role. They really have. Well, actually. a very key role. If that well, certainly the Queen, there'd been a, an awful lot of uh, discomfort about the way that the authorities have reacted to the tragedies. Mm, absolutely right. And yeah. the Queen is very good at that. But whether is, the rest yeah. of them are is another matter, really. Well, I, no, I think Harry is. Well, he goes the, along. Yeah. Prince Charles, Prince, mm. Prince William. A lot of people loved a European hat as well, didn't they? Mm. <laughs> Um, let's have a look at the. Uh, you talk about the tragedies that have been recently. It's all at the front of the Guardian. Mm. Um, yep. 60, mm. 60 high rise flats. I mean, which is all that have been tested mm. um, uh, are not safe. Well, the cladding yeah. is. Uh, now, what is interesting in this, we've been told time and time again we're, we're testing 100 samples a day. Yeah. It yeah. now turns out that that's quite a lot of samples mm. from each building. So yes. it's, it's yeah. actually only eight or nine. Tower blocks a day. Yes, well, it's going to take ages to get through well, it. It's an extraordinary story, this really. I mean, notwithstanding the terrible uh, tragedy that happened mm. in West London, you know, it now appears that there are many, many more of these buildings. And nobody's really answering the question as to how this has happened. Mm. Nobody's saying, well, well we who's in charge of all of this? All mm. of these, I think there's 17 individual local authorities. 25 now. Is it 25? Mm. Um, who have basically allowed these, these building contractors to, re, to renew various parts of these buildings without seemingly any kind of adherence to... to to the quality control or to the, the, the legality of what well, they're doing. Well, the problem, the, and nobody's holding up their hands and going, we were the ones that checked it and we were the ones that said it was okay. Yeah, but the problem is no one actually knows if it's quite, whether this stuff was legal at the time it went yeah. on, yeah. which it might have been. Yeah. Yeah. And even with this, this stuff that they're concerned about now, they're sort of saying, well, it might be technically illegal, but the, you can apply for special right. discompensation mm. to fit it. But I think, that's, I think that's the problem, is that nobody seems to know, which, which really <laughs> no. belies the system's fault because what it means is nobody knows what's going on now how many other parts of these local authority budgets and local authority businesses are being run in this kind of way i mean yeah. it's absolutely shocking i totally Terrible. agree and then you've got the whole camden situation which is what the guardian is a picture of yeah. you know the chalcott estates where there's still a th something like a hundred um home what well, hundred homeowners yeah who don't want to leave Misplaced and they're saying family, well it was perfectly yeah. safe last week mm -hmm. why are you kicking everybody out yeah. some of whom are being made to sleep in a, a leisure center yeah. it's yeah. bonkers you're absolutely right absolutely somebody, mad somebody should take a grip and say right i'm in charge yeah. and they go to every building and say right check that yeah. what i think is the most appalling thing about this is that the reason this cladding went on in the first place was because these blocks are hideous they're hideous buildings and so they said well look instead of having a you know a long-term plan to replace mm. them stick all this stuff on the outside of them and make them look better and look better yeah. <laughs> I mean, well. so crazy you know just, is it enough it, you know of course it is because it, it, it's the stuff that burns so you know well yes but we, yeah. know, we know that, that at the now. time mm. yeah sure time, i mean this yeah. is the thing Heinz, it's, it's all and i said this the other day hindsight is a wonderful thing yes you know, and often it takes, as awful as it is, it sometimes takes a tragedy to, mm. to hit a point to say, actually, mm. we, we need to sort of clear this yes. whole mess up. that's true. Um, I mean, the thing that, that also is interesting to me is that there's not much attention being paid to the actual cause of the fire. Because, mm. of course, everybody knows that, that it shouldn't have gone as, 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 as big as it did and it should have been, uh, you know, contained in a better way. Mm. But, I mean, you know, how many more of these fridges are out there? And I know mm. people have said, oh, well, we're going to try and check on that as well. But surely the m more kind of urgent cause of, of, of the fire should be that if anyone's got one of these fridges, mm. they need to return it or somebody needs to take it away. Yeah. 
well, well, I'm sure that's being looked well, at. You're obsessed so by it. It's a that, complete though. shambles. I just think it's a shambles. Oh, he's obsessed it, by it. Could, it could be the fridge right. freezer. It could have been yeah. um, some gas points well, or electric points in yeah. the actual tower block. Well, all right. of this is being investigated. Well, on, on that note, we've, we have got to, we've got to head to the break yeah. before I get into really serious Well, he's not very good at timekeeping, by the way. Very close on him. We're going to take a break. Back with more for you in just a moment. So we're looking through the papers with the two mics. Let's have a look at the mail, page five of the yeah. mail. We're go we're, there could be a new Benidorm for us all well, to head to. I, I mean, it's, it's incredible, this, isn't it? This is North Korea. I mean, it must be one of the most confused countries in the world. But, you know, the great leader there, Kim Jong-un, he sent a load of his guys off to Spain and said, come back with some ideas. We're going to create a, you know, a beach resort in North Korea. Um, so all these guys from, from the North Korean military set off on a, on a route to, to Alicante um, from the French border to Alicante by road. They didn't like anything except Benidorm. And when they got there, they're all playing around beach balls and things. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to one of these great, you know, sort of states that belong in the great leader, but they normally always wear military uniforms, yeah, you know, and military peak caps. And you can imagine all these guys in Benidorm jumping up and down, you know, building sandcastles in this. But anyway, they've decided it's great. Uh, and they're going back to create a, a Benidorm in North Korea. While seemingly unimpressed by Barcelona's rich cultural attractions, they were said to enjoy Benidorm's holiday parks. They were meant to be amazed, well, weren't they, by yeah. the Costa Blanca? I mean, many people have, have had lots of different emotions, I suppose. Business. Yes. Cost the blanket. I don't think you've ever been amazed by it. Well, let's well, <laughs> get out much. These you guys. Know, I don't know it's that it's you can not <laughs> bend it all. I don't know. <laughs> but when well, they came back and on. said it was amazing, you're yeah. absolutely right. That mm. was the. You can not bend it all. I don't know. But when well, they came back and said it was amazing, you're yeah. absolutely right. That was the official report said amazing. Yeah. The despot demanded the construction of a Benidorm style beach resort, but much bigger than Benidorm. Well, they, it could be the place to go. You just wait for those package deals to come yeah, out. It could be, but this is a country where we are, sometimes get reports that. The local people have to eat the bark off the trees oh, because I know. the economy is so, you know... That might be okay, okay. Well, it is. <laughs> yes. As you say, a very confused yeah. so That's put it politely. Yeah. Gents, thank you. Uh, what, Gail, what have you got for us? Um, in the Star today is an interesting piece, Swap Shop, talking about Sergio Aguero and Alexis Sanchez, two of the most high-profile players in the Premier League, in a possible swap deal which would perhaps suit both clubs. It would be, they say, the most stunning straight exchange seen in the Premier League. You wonder which fans think they would get a better deal from that. Yeah. Mm, lovely. I'll keep you talking. Sweet as about that one if you want this morning. Let's get a quick check on the weather for you with Naz. Let's have a look through the papers for you this morning. TalkSport Radio presenters Mike Graham and Mike Parry are both here once again. Good to see you. Thank Let's you. kick straight off with the Times, should we? Because uh, the, a lot of coverage of Jeremy Corbyn being at Glastonbury. Mm. He's been a bit loose-lipped, it would seem. Well, he has. He's been talking to Michael Evis, who invited him down there, who's the guy that's been running Glastonbury for years and years and years. I think he's about 81 now, and he's mm. a massive CND campaigner, of course, and it used to be a CND kind of event, Events, in, yeah. a, in a way. Uh, but but it's now, it has now turned into a Labour... A Labour well, it's event. a Labour loving now, isn't it, really? Yeah. I mean, thousands of people chanting Jeremy Corbyn's name. I mean, if you didn't like the White Stripes before, you really don't like him now, because all you hear is this, oh, Jeremy Corbyn thing, re you know, sort of being... being uh, blasted out all over the place. But he's told uh, Michael Levis as well that he expects to be Prime Minister in six months uh, and that when uh, he does become Prime Minister he will get rid of Trident as soon as he can, which is a bit unfortunate because according to Labour policy um, they want to keep it. Yeah. yeah, and he didn't mention that during uh, the, no. the election campaign. No, they want to keep the people campaign. who work in the industry yes. and all those who, who, you know, who live by it. Yeah. I, I think it's so bizarre. I mean, it's not just Jeremy Corbyn. All politicians are loose-lipped these days, aren't they? You know, they all go around just sort of dreamily speaking aloud, don't they? And mm. thinking aloud. And, yeah. you know, you Boris Johnson's Mays exactly the same. You think Theresa May's loose-lipped? Well, no, but Boris Johnson is, isn't he? He often give, you know, gives us policy on the stump and everybody takes a step back and says, oh, we didn't know that. I don't think they regard politics anymore as something that happens around the cabinet table or in the, you know, the opposition ranks, I think they regard it as a, an open policy discussion and any idea that seems to bounce and resonate back, 
Yeah, let's have it. Well, let's they make they it. make policy on on the Sunday morning political programs, don't they? Yes. I mean, you know, Sophie Ridge on Sunday gets somebody in, and they make the news for the week, and then suddenly he goes down, goes down to Glastonbury, starts making policy. John McDonnell was down there as well yesterday, uh, talking about all sorts of things, and 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 really kind of stirring up the pot and saying, you know, yeah. we need to take this country back. You know, we we you know, it's like they won the election or something. Mm. They didn't win the election. It's you know, you know, it's, there isn't one at the moment. No, no. Okay. Well, again, your thoughts on that very welcome. This morning, let's have a look at the Telegraph, um, and we've got uh, HMS Queen Elizabeth. Yes, uh, which is going to start. It's Harry's favourite subject, this the Royal well, Navy. Yeah. Well, it, it's only because I live down on Portsmouth Harbour, and when I first lived there eight or nine years ago, there were four or five Royal Navy ships there all the time. There are none now. You never see a Royal Navy ship. Where has the Royal Navy gone? Nobody knows. You know, the last Prime Minister, but uh, last Prime Minister David, but one David Cameron, uh, suddenly scrapped the Ark Royal just like that. One minute it's parked, you know, just below my balcony on Portsmouth Harbour. Next minute, oh, it's off to Turkey to be made into razor blades, you know. So I'm delighted that we're getting a, you know, a prestige. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's where they oh, go. We've got aircraft that's where they go. Any aircraft. Well, well, to start off with, mm. but we all get aircraft. But the, the sheer uh, size of this thing is what is uh, blowing everybody's mind. 65,000 ton HMS Queen Elizabeth. It's been towed out of uh, Rosyth today, right? 14 inches to spare on either side of the dockyard 14 gate. 14 inches. 14 inches for a ship with which is so huge, you could put 270, uh, 470 uh, double-decker buses on it. Left hand down a bit, though. Yeah, left hand <laughs> down a bit. Yeah. It's, it, mirrors. it will then go under bridges, including the, um, the three bridges out of the fourth, with only six feet to spare at the top, if you bring the biggest mass down by 60 degrees. And at some point in going out, it will have only 20 inches of water under its keel. <laughs> that is, wow. uh, you know, like that is some engineering. Disaster, isn't it? Well, well, that's why they've been dredging Portsmouth Harbour for the last two years, try and make it deeper, so when the ship comes in and, and, and parks there, Does nothing it will happen to it. But I'm delighted that, you know, the, the Royal Navy is, uh, is producing this huge ship. The other part of this story, which is absolutely marvellous, is that the minute it gets out into open sea, the Russians will be on it and they'll have submarines floating around. <laughs> yeah, well, well, who knows? Who knows in the world of espionage? Yeah, well, well be right. could be on it already. But, but these submarines, they have to pick up the sound of the ship so that it's got a very, very distinct sound, you know what I mean, the echoes that come from the ship. So they know then, anywhere in the world where the ship is, they can detect it from its underwater signature. It's signature noise. Which well, they can presumably see it, it, wherever it is. Can't but, they? Well, yes, but it's I mean, quite big. It, it's very big, but if it's travelling at night and mm. it's 23 miles away, uh -huh. a Russian yeah. submarine picks up a ship, they know instantly. big but if it's traveling at night and mm. it's 23 miles away uh -huh. an ocean yeah. submarine picks up a ship they know instantly I see. it's well, this it one yeah, yeah. Uh, that's clever stuff isn't it yeah and of course here's your, your fact for the day which gets forgotten it is a ship yes boats are submarines yeah is that right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so well, if you ever talk uh, about a boat it's actually a boat means submarine okay well, anything this, else is a ship okay. this is very What's much a ferry a, with, a, with a thousand What's sailors a ferry? Well, that's a, a ship, boat isn't it? it's a ship is it yeah okay yeah the ports was gospel Gospel, what about those yeah. little, the dinghy boat? Yeah. yeah. They're not boats. Well, that's a rowing boat. boat. It's not a ship, though, is it's it? It's a rowing boat. It's a, no, rowing boats? Got... Yeah, rowing boats aren't well, boats. No. Yeah. Boat rowing boat. A boat is a submarine. So a rowing boat is not a ship, though? Is no, it? I don't know. It's a row. I don't know. It's a rowing dinghy. boat. Dinghy. <laughs> I don't know. Cool. There you go. There you go. I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank I'm you very much out, for I'm that. Putting it out there. <laughs> yeah. um, Stick it rowing boats. Let's have a look at the Express. Summer is on hold for two weeks. Yeah, well, summer's on hold for two well, weeks. Well, we've had it basically, haven't we? Yeah. I think that was it last week. Yeah, yeah, no, but I'm, I'm yeah. delighted summer's on hold for That's two weeks. It was too hot, wasn't it? Yeah, I am a total anti-sun person, you know. We weren't born in the northern hemisphere, in the north of the northern hemisphere, to live in heat waves like we had last week. Did anybody get any sleep last week? Oh, anybody was, at all? Nobody. It was too, five it nights was of too hot. baking temperature. So, the Express report, summer is back on hold for a fortnight of chilly temperatures, rain and dreary weather. Yes! That's... Uh, no, 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 no. I'm surprised they haven't put this on the front page, actually. It's normally yeah. the weather dominates the Daily it, Express front Well, yeah. Page, it? It, it does. Yeah. You look like you like the sun a bit that more, and house though. Prices. I'm, well, I'm a normal person, you know. I quite it's like going normal. out. A normal. He, this is a guy no. who doesn't like to go on holiday. No, I don't. You know, he doesn't like to go anywhere where there's a beach. He doesn't like to go near any water. I go to Iceland for my holidays. I was going to ask. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's where I go, yeah. Or when was the last time you had a holiday? Uh, well, I don't believe in holidays, really. He doesn't have holidays. To be honest, I think they do. He has this kind of Presbyterian spirit. He doesn't like to enjoy himself. And I much prefer the hot weather. 
I loved the hot weather last week. It was wonderful. No, you didn't. You started complaining about it. No, you did. Correct. At some stage, you started complaining. No, you said you true. couldn't sleep and you were getting headaches. No, no, I didn't say that. I did say that. No, that was somebody <laughs> else you're thinking of. I don't know. But the point uh, is... The you're the broadcasting is, wife. Well, um, we all know that you have to have two wardrobes in this country, but you've got one wardrobe for 11 months, right? And one, and one wardrobe for one month. And it's all right. wrong. We're not, we don't design to walk around in heat. Stephen, should well, you go home and let the mic... Leave them to it. I'll tell you what, we'll go... Mike Mike G show. We'll go for a break. <laughs> <laughs> Back in a moment. <laughs> Still into the papers with the two mics. Um, I know this is one that's very close to your heart, Mike G. Mm -hmm. Lipstick. Lipstick, yeah. yeah. Well, not that I actually wear a lot of lipstick, but I like to consider myself really? something of a, a connoisseur of lipstick. Mm. And I don't oh, know, yeah. looking at Claudia, whether uh, you've got a nude sort of lipstick on there. Or... She has got a nude one on. Wow, I saw you. You're, that, you're right, that, yeah. That, yeah, I am right. I, like, I'm always... I saw her slather it on just before the top. Yeah. I, I, I See, I don't really need much lipstick because my lips are already pretty, pretty big. And yeah. unfortunately, uh, not. Actually, your lips are excessively big. Thank you very much. It's your most Unappealing feature. I don't see it that way. Unappealing but face. somebody's done a study basically that says the colour of your lipstick will determine where you're from. Mm. So believe it or not, nude lipstick normally is worn by people in the north of England, mm -hmm. right. which north I think is normal where Stephen uh, emanates from. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know whether you would pick a show, but if you wear very, very red lipstick, generally speaking, you're thought to be a Londoner, because oh, that's right. where it's popular. Mm. Oh. So, uh, I don't know how that works. In Scotland, the best selling lipstick was High Shine Baby Pink, yep. Manchester, it was Coral Beige, and in Leeds, it was Berry Plum. Yeah. Out of Very all the plum. stories, yeah. why, why, why was he fascinated with this one? Well, I just find it interesting, because well, I always like looking... rejected by women. Um, well, <laughs> let's not get into that, shall we? Because uh, <laughs> poor old Porky's never been married. He lives on his own, lives on his own, and has done for many a year. Oh, never, oh, never goes on yeah. holiday. Yeah, gets a table for one at Weatherspoons every Sunday, <laughs> sits <laughs> there for about seven hours, anything. has two portions of fish and chips. Yeah. I spend my time with my family and my kids. Well, which family? The one you abandoned in America? Not that one, no. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, another one. Uh, from Newcastle, OK, uh, you wear nude as well. Mm -hmm. So I just, no, I just find it fascinating because obviously they do all these kinds of things in order to sell more lipstick, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, the popularity of different lipstick tones, depending on the city in which you are sold in, you're selling in. Portsmouth, where he comes from, yeah. high shine, bright pink. High shine, bright pink. Well, I don't well, like that. But I think that's rubbish regionally. I think women wear lipstick according to the shade of the mood they're in at the moment. So if they're going out for a night and they feel in a great mood and you know, they want to meet a nice chap okay. and have a bit of champagne. We can talk about sports. See, this is, yeah, this yeah. Is let me come to lipstick. Naz, Absolutely. I think this is where, this is where ladies... This is, where, this, is why, this is why he's on his own. Exactly. Right? Yeah. We, we, we understand lipsticks, yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, um, yeah. I don't know if it's based on. I don't think it's. I don't know, either. gents. We shall ponder it all, all morning to come. Let's see if if Naz's lipstick matches the weather. Mm huh? <laughs> so let's get the views now from the two mics, Mike Graham and Mike Parry, who are here. Um, can we talk about the, this whole cladding issue and the mm. testing issue first and first and foremost? Hundred percent failure rate. Is, I mean, I have to say, I'm astounded. Mm. I'm astounded at that. I mean, you knew. So fail not all of them well this is the thing what i was saying a little bit earlier on we were discussing the way the papers have been covering it mm. it's incredible that, that that so little attention seems to have been paid to the way that this was all done when it was done yeah. it's hard to imagine who's to blame for it and lots of people say oh we don't want to just find someone to blame mm. but actually when it was done. Yeah. It's hard to imagine who's to blame for it, and lots of people say, oh, we don't want to just find someone to blame. Mm -hmm. But actually, we do want to find someone to blame, because there was clearly an oversight uh, made here by either local government or, or national government. Yeah, but it's such a huge issue. And I it's mean, a massive, as you said just there to the minister, I mean, this is a massive problem. Yeah. It's not going to just go away. He says, well, we are dealing with it, but actually, you've been on the ground, you were in Camden. Yeah. They're not dealing with it. People are walking around not knowing what's going on. People are always saying, we're not being told we don't know why we're being evacuated or we don't know why some people are being allowed to stay in buildings. We don't know where we're going to be living. The Grenfell people, three weeks later, they yeah. still don't know where they're going to be living. Actually, because it's a 100% failure rate, in a perverse sort of way, it makes the situation easier. Because now we know all cladding is dangerous. Well... Do you see what I mean? And, and, yeah, and what I, I'm saying I, is yeah. the experts don't have to yeah. say, right, that's semi-dangerous, that's not dangerous. So why not just pull it all off? But it's, well, it's 100% it's, it's, it's failure rate of the 10% of the, of the buildings that have been yeah, tested so far. Yeah, but it looks like it's a pretty good indication. Well, it's like, it's, it's, it's yeah. a bit like a, an opinion poll. It's not looking poll, good, it? but it hasn't. They obviously need to complete but, And also, it. this is only in, yeah. in public housing and social housing. As far that's as right. Know. So, I mean, there are private mm. buildings, there are hotels, apparently, yeah. one mm. of which I think is in Theresa 
Mays constituency, mm. which have used similar cladding, you know, yeah. what's going to happen there and who's going to pay for all that? Well, it's, yeah, it's, but it's a nightmare. We're talking people, about hospitals and, yeah. all, and offices. Yeah, 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 and yeah, but people responsible for these buildings should be tearing it off now. Because, you know, you're, you're saying, oh, well, it's not certain that it's all dangerous. But even if there's a one or two percent chance of it being dangerous, just pull it off. I would have thought instead of going around inspecting things, they're wasting their time. I would take workmen there and get up on ladders and whatever yeah, and cranes just and, and remove. Why can't you just? Because do it? You, it's too much of a. It's too big of a job for a start. And but it's going to have to come off eventually. If it well, is not, dangerous. Yeah, but if it's not and they don't know that it is, then that would be a waste of everybody's time and everybody's money. And we haven't You've got seen any the money. reaction of people in, in social yeah. housing yeah. Yeah. being told to evacuate because exactly. they believe it is unsafe. Yes. You've seen the reaction of people who believe it's unsafe. So you yeah. can imagine people's reaction who are told to, to leave their buildings and they don't even know. They, yeah. they, they, they're not certain yeah, but that it, it would, is unsafe. Yeah. But, but it wouldn't be evacuating everybody, would it? Because, I mean, that, as, as you've seen, that's well, all... That, but that, yeah. but that's, only, that's, only been, that's only happened in Camden. Yeah. That's only happened in Camden because of it tied in with the, the, the gas pipe lagging as well. Yes, but, but we don't know what standard they're taking to evacuate or not to evacuate, do we? In buildings which have cladding, which is... Deemed to be there dangerous. is a there is a belief as well that it's being driven very much by this kind of compensation culture that yeah. they're frightened of not evacuating those buildings just in case something happens. Well, and they're being over, they're being over, they have to. They're being over cautious mm. on the basis oh, yeah. that. Uh, well, that yeah. well, it, well, that was in Camden. It was a decision by the by the fire brigade. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it, it was a recommendation, uh, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I think it was an insistence. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, so anyway, look, it, it, this is a. a a massively developing story, yeah. yeah. You know, and it's it is changing day by day. So we we'll keep a very close eye on that throughout the course. Well, it of the seems day. to be London at the moment as well, doesn't it? No, no, it's no, no, it's not. It's, it's it's 25 local authorities now. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, it's London. It's spreading out. We don't know how far it's going to spread. I mean, we don't know if it's going to go to Newcastle, into Scotland. It could be everywhere. It could it's be nothing, every, nothing in Scotland yet. But it, it's, could, I mean, could be every no, tower block in this country in needs at some stage. I mean, there's examining. there's some in Manchester, some in Plymouth, yeah. some in uh, places like Brent in London. Yeah. Uh, but it's 20, we only know. I think we only have been told of 17 authorities. We Sorry. know there's we know there's 25, but we haven't been told which ones yet because the residents haven't yet been informed. Mm. So, is it? It's, 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 it's going to grow. <clears throat> oh, we're almost out of time. Let's talk DUP. Mm. Should we? Arlene Foster is yeah. in town. Yeah, we're all very happy about that, aren't we? She's mm. uh, been called the most powerful woman in Westminster now, mm. even more powerful than Theresa May, because she may or may not hold the key yeah. to whether the vote on Thursday goes towards the Queen's speech for the, mm. for the government, mm. or, in fact, whether she decides to help Jeremy Corbyn get in. So She wouldn't do that, though, would she? Yeah. Well, nobody knows, again, what she's going to do, because mm. uh, she keeps saying she's not going to try and extract anything out of uh, uh, Theresa May in order to do a deal. But, you know, it's politics, isn't it? She's not going to do it for nothing. Yeah, but they are so diametrically opposed to everything represented by Labour and, and Jeremy Corbyn that they, they would simply be committing suicide, wouldn't they, politically themselves, if they decided to do anything but stick with the Tories. But what I think is interesting, hearing some of the DUP speak over the weekend, I mean, they sort of became almost moderate, didn't they, when the Northern Ireland Agreement came together and Ian Paisley Senior mm. is suddenly talking to Martin McGuinness. Mm. It's interesting listening to Ian Paisley Junior over mm. the weekend, who now seems to want to move back to some rather, you know, older, more old-fashioned views within the DUP. So I wonder whether they are flexing their muscles in that way, you know what I mean? See, I thought right. he came across more moderate, actually. Did you? Yeah. I didn't. I thought he, he echoed his father's beliefs but his father's beliefs at the start of the movement when the party yeah. was formed, rather than his father's beliefs when it was all, you know, getting together with Martin McGuinness. You know, the thing is, we've seen it all before. Mm. Everything works in political cycles. Mm. Yeah. We've seen it all before. It'll all happen again, all mm. of this. Mm. Uh, gents, it's been good to see you both. Yep. Thank you very much indeed. Informative and thank you for having us. Well. Yeah, well, thank Pleasure. you very much you'll, indeed. You'll be always. back. You'll be back. Stay with us here on Sunrise coming up. The uh, latest in our ocean rescue campaign as Dan Whitehead visits a nature reserve on the West Sussex coast.